It's not on. Just kidding. This <laughs> 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 is so exciting. More bacon. Hello, chef. <laughs> Hello, McGraw. And so, um, we have a challenge for you today that might be a little bit difficult, might be a little bit hands-on. Today, the goal is to make soba carbonara. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> soba carbonara, he says. Soba carbonara, this guy says. He's taking soba noodle, classic delicate noodle, generally enjoyed with a light, elegant broth, and asking me to put some heavy, rich, bacony, eggy sauce with it. I'm into it. Let's make it work. I expect you're gonna run into a few problems, obviously, because uh, these things kind of like conflict. Um, kind but, of. <laughs> <laughs> Polar opposites. And I know that it's uh, not exactly traditional, but hopefully the internet forgives us. And <laughs> They're gonna be mad. Us. All right, well, good luck, chef. Okay, so. When I think about carbonara, I think silky, rich, definitely like hearty. It's not delicate. You know, it's one of those dishes that's kind of like stick to your ribs. And then when I think about soba noodles, I think the complete opposite of carbonara. I think almost like feminine, soft, you know, very, uh, very like elegant, you know? With those two thoughts, my goal is to create, <clears throat> essentially create something new. That's basically what it's gonna be. Starting with our buckwheat flour. We need some eggs. Dee, dee, dee. Soy, some garlic. I'll just use this one. All right, bacon. We have Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna throw my broth in this Instapot. I'm gonna use this for our egg. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with the broth. No. Yes. Yes. The stool camera's off. Why? Okay, I'm going to start with the broth and then I'm gonna do the noodles and then I'm going to make all the accoutrements for the bowl of noodley broth carbonara isobani. So, but I'm losing it. <laughs> okay, for the broth, this is like one of my favorite things to make. I really, like when I was a kid, I used to make soups and broths. And so I think that's really the base of building the flavor. Um, it's important to have alliums, you know, i.e. shallots, garlic, uh, or onion flavors that are really the base. And then aromatics, you know, I think with this one, we're gonna use some some bay leaf, and I'm also going to deglaze with some sake. Uh, this bacon that was sent to me is uh, cured, so for the broth, I might use the cured bacon, and then just kind of like julienne this because I want to have some bacon strips at for garnish. Basically just going to cut all of my mise en place, mushroom. But I like to use these mushrooms because they're texturally, they're really meaty. Shallots, you know, shallots, they kind of have this sweeter sort of more uh, like lighter approach to an onion flavor. I think I'm gonna kind of roast them a little bit, just get a, a tiny bit of color on them so my broth has some like depth of flavor basically. A couple garlic pieces. I'm just gonna smash them, they'll cook down in the broth itself. I don't need to like chop it. I'm going to open up some parm. The main variable here I feel like that's the most challenging is the soba noodle itself. I mean, it's definitely no easy task. I have extra bacon and I'm going to use this one. This one's so smoky and so salty in a good way. So I'm going to use some of that in this, uh, the other bacon that I have as well. Parmesan rind, shallots, bay leaf, garlic, sliced bacon, mushrooms, serving cheese for later. So first we'll use butter for the fat. Butter. 
bacon, shallots. Why don't I just bring this whole tray over? Garlic. Oh my god, this smells amazing. Okay, I'm gonna add some mushroom. This is pretty much ready to go to add my liquid. So I'll add a little bit of sake and deglaze all that sort of Maillard reaction that's happening on the bottom, all this crispiness we wanna get off. So I wanna use a dry sake over a sort of sweet sake because I am sort of mimicking the idea of um, basically like wine. So this is the mirin that I made. I'm gonna add a little bit of mirin. But yeah, so I don't wanna use like a sweet sake because I wanna be able to control the sweetness. And I know what that mirin tastes like. If I add sweet sake, it might just become too sweet. I just really want something dry. I mean, it smells so good. Agua is going in. Nice, nice. A little bit more soy. And lid goes on. Beeping. More bacon. Excellent, excellent. What I'm gonna do is blanch some bacon and I'm going to roast it off. Blanching it first will sort of help me release some of the salt, some of the fat and ultimately I'll get a more tender bite of bacon. So first I'm just gonna run my knife through and chop it down. Uh, water's boiling. Drop my bacon in so that could blanch a bit. Eggs cooking, they've been in there about 20 minutes. Uh, should take about an hour or so. Blanched bacon babies, totally. And it's such a it's such an amazing texture when you roast it after you blanch it. Carbonara reimagined. Add a piece of garlic when I roast it. A lot of the nuances are gonna come from layering flavor. I, that's super, super crucial in developing delicious bites. So that's gonna continue to get some color. We're gonna grab some snow peas. And some scallions. And mostly a lot of the sort of heavy lifting of this dish is complete. So snow peas, clean these guys up a bit. Okay, this is what we want. Nice crisp texture, but still tender. Okay, bacon. We can check on our broth here. Good. Just want to sort of blanch and shock these snow peas so they're cooked through. Just gonna make sure they're really cold. They're super tender. Let's test one of these guys. Everything's kind of starting to come together. Before I start my soba noodle, I want to make sure everything is happy and working great. Okay, what we got here? So, nice yoki, jammy, not super jammy. That's going to meld nicely in with the, with the broth. Happy egg. It's coming together slowly but deliciously. Snow peas, we have bacon, we have the broth working, we have our eggs that are cooked. Let's make some soba noodles. So I'm going to need all purpose flour and I'm also going to need buckwheat flour. Voila! Uh, so here's what flour looks like. I'm pretty sure you already know that. Um, buckwheat, you might not know about. Um, super earthy, 
Really interesting texture, it almost is grainy. So really what I wanna do is sift some of the larger sort of um, outer hull pieces out. What I'm going to do is grab my scale and I'm going to measure the amount of flour that I need. Let's do this in grams because it's easy to do grams. In terms of ratio of flour, uh, I think I'm gonna use about 70% buckwheat, 30% um, of uh, AP flour, uh -huh. Uh -huh. 140, let's do 140. And we'll do 60 of buckwheat. Buckwheat flour. So generally you wanna use a super specific finely milled flour for making soba noodles. But I don't have that exact like super fine milled flour so I'm attempting to achieve a similar um, sort of grain by sifting some of the larger pieces out. It's crazy how much of that those like larger pieces come out. Okay, so flour, AP flour. Fun! My next kitchen is gonna be so big. <laughs> Soba time. So it should be Similar texture to wet sand. I heard that if you, it, a lot of like artisan soba noodle makers actually make soba with their eyes closed because you have 10 senses in your fingers as opposed to two or one in your eyes. So just kneading the dough. So I'll just place a little bit of uh, tapioca starch Basically, that's just so nothing sticks. Okay, let's see what we got here. So essentially, I'm trying to create a uh, sort of rectangle shape. Let's add a little bit more tapioca starch. So let's see if it works if we roll it. I'm not 100% sure. these guys in and see where we're at. Okay, batch one. See where we're at. It's a little rinse action. Get some data. See if we're heading in the right direction. I just wanna go a little bit longer on the noodle. So I'm gonna do another round. This, these are a little bit longer strands of noodle. I might not roll the next batch out so thin, but it has a nice chewy texture. Happy about that. Now I just think like the, the motion is in place. I think more so now it's about kind of dialing in mouthfeel, dialing in sort of uh, the depth of the noodle. That's the important part is like not giving up. <laughs> I just needed a win, you know, I needed that one just to look at them. My dream come true actually. Let's assemble some soba. Some beautiful light scallion. A little bit of soba. Yum. I actually went with an Asiago Parmesan for this because I wanted to play against the nuttiness of the, of the soba noodle. I think that'll be a nice... Season this egg a bit. Little espalette pepper, some Malden sea salt. 
So you want to make sure everything is seasoned individually. What I'm going to do is place some of the snow peas kind of the roasted bacon so happy okay so then I'm gonna put just a little bit of Parmesan cheese in here It's, I'm really proud of this actually. I really, I think this is a nice, you know, respectful way to both traditions. It's elegant, it's light, and, um, and you're still using the technique. I think really it's about, I'm just gonna break this yolky egg open. So that's really gonna make this broth rich and delicious. I mean, who could be like mad at that bite? <laughs> I just ate carbonara. In my brain it tells me I'm eating carbonara, but yet refined and elegant and light. Both were respected throughout the process and we kind of just really created something new. Mm -hmm. Don't mind my slurping. <laughs>